Thanks for joining us this week on Email Geeks at Home Drinking Coffee. Join your hosts, Chris Marriott and Paul Schreiner each week as they talk email marketing, life, purpose, faith, but mainly email marketing. If you're looking for some normalcy in these crazy times, you've come to the right place. Welcome to a special edition of, special bonus edition of Email Geeks at Home Drinking Coffee. It's special for a lot of reasons, uh, it's special because we uh, have producer David Inman joining us uh, in the pre-show. It's special because I'm not in my normal location. Uh, you might notice a different background. I'm in the condo uh, that those of you who were watching season one, uh, the condo that sponsored uh, a couple of our episodes when it was trying to sell itself, it has. I'm here moving out, but I couldn't move out without showing you a view of the mighty Norwalk River. See there on the other side of the parking lot? That's the mighty Norwalk River, River Views. And um, it's special because we have very special guests today. And, and Paul, why don't you, uh, good morning, Paul. Well, good morning, David. Good morning, Paul. Paul, why don't you, <laughs> why don't you tell us about this special episode? Sure. So we had this, uh, we had hatched a plan that we were going to do a Mystery Science Theater 3000 deal. Chester has this fantastic story that uh, is one that will live in, in uh, history uh, for email marketing. And he offered to share it. And uh, it's, a, you know, it's one of those mistake recovery stories. And what was interesting, so we were going to, we were going to, you know, I was going to interview him. And then my good friend David and my, my good friend Chris were going to um, sort of make fun of us as we went. <laughs> Uh, the problem was uh, the content was really, really good. Like Chester is a, a great dude with a great story and a great heart. And it's hard to make fun of that. <laughs> <laughs> Even for us. Even right. for us. So, um, you know, instead we thought let's roll it out as sort of a bonus episode to season two. Um, just to sort of, uh, again, it's you know, the idea that we all make mistakes and this is how you recover. It's one of those universal stories we can all benefit from. But uh, yeah, I think, I think everyone's going to love this episode. It's weird though, because it's That's just great. me and no Chris. Well, well, if you look closely, I think you, you will see David and I will be enjoying the show with you. Um, we may not be commenting, but uh, again, if you look closely, David, right, we'll, we'll, we'll be there in spirit. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> all right well with no further ado let's get to this bonus bonus episode and uh we hope you all enjoyed as much as uh, paul enjoyed uh creating it so thanks and see you soon all right welcome back to email geeks at home drinking coffee uh this week's gonna be a little bit different uh i don't have my uh co-host chris marriott with me um we're gonna do kind of a little uh, a, a different thing we're pretty excited about it uh, I do have a guest, a good friend of mine who's been in the industry for a, a long time. Uh, he is uh, uh, Chester Bullock. Um, he's currently, I don't know his specific role at rentpath.com, uh, but he is, uh, what is your official title there? Director of Marketing Technology. That's a big title. It's, yeah, I got to pick it kind of. <laughs> <laughs> And you're not, you are not the, the, I don't want to say millennial, but you, you're not like, I want to be the marketing technology czar or the ninja of marketing technology. No, no. When I was at Trendline, you know, I was a VP, but unofficially I told everybody I was just king of the nerds. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> and, and I think that's also pointing out as king of the nerds. You also wrote uh, a book, uh, Amp Script for Dummies. Is that the title? Uh, Salesforce Marketing Cloud for Dummies. Okay, Salesforce Marketing Cloud for Dummies. Yeah. You're just my go-to for all AMP script questions. That's kind of crazy because um, Elliot Harper and Adam Spriggs have the AMP script guide, which I think is more thorough, but I, I'm flattered. Well, there's a lot of great resources, and we all use them. <laughs> yes, yes. Anyway. I still go back into my book every once in a while. Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure. Um, the plan today... Uh, you and I have been talking about this forever, uh, and I think I, I think this is such a uh, a fantastic setup. You know, you and I had talked about sort of using some adult drinks as part of this because the just the nature of of this particular conversation it happens at 
at shows, at industry shows, industry mm -hmm. where we're all standing around with a drink, right? We're we're uh, having, uh, you know, everyone's just telling their stories, their war stories, right? right? And I, I just remember the first time uh, you were like, you guys want to hear a story? <laughs> I was like, yeah, tell me the story. And all of a sudden, you know, my jaw drops to the floor. I was like, oh. <laughs> and so, uh, you, you know, the, the goal was how do we recreate that kind of feeling in a stupid Zoom call between me and my friend uh, uh, Chester. So um, the, the, the theme is kind of today uh, making mistakes and sort of how to recover from them, right? Um, and so, uh, I, I'm happy to just give you sort of a soapbox. Tell us what's going on. I'd love it to be a little more interactive where I can poke you with questions as we go. Does that seem? Yeah, seem that's cool? totally fair. Totally fair. Okay. So, uh, set the stage. <laughs> All right. So it's 2013, <laughs> January of 2013. Okay. Um, Obama had been elected. Yep. And most people don't know this. At the time I was working for Ticketmaster, people know that. Okay. But what most people don't realize is that around the inauguration, there are a number of different events. There's two or three balls. Right. There's the parade. Um, there's the inauguration event itself. And all of those need to have some sort of access control. Right. So traditionally, Ticketmaster has been the partner for these inaugural events. Right. So, so Partnering with... Go ahead. For those of us who are not ticketing nerds, access control means limiting the number of people who are coming in and going, right? Right, oh, and it even damps his seating. Right. I mean, for, for the event itself, like out on the steps of the Capitol, they had very specific assigned seating. Right. Uh, and, you know, you can make your own determinations about how popular a certain politician is as to how close they get to be. Um, sure. That was a weird thing to experience, just Right. All these politicians, minions come into our office saying, well, I really need to be closer. My guy needs to be closer. Right, right, right. You know, this is what we got, so deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah. So we were the official ticketing partner. As part of that, at the time, I was working with a white-label version of Exact Target slash now Salesforce Marketing. Right. They, they that, were doing that where they were. Uh, yeah. I mean, honestly, they all did. This is yeah, no longer exact good. target. This is it's our agency version. It's the Ticketmaster ESP. Exactly, and you know my role at Ticketmaster at the time was to help different box office managers for sports teams, uh, community arts organizations, all these different groups. Help them be able to sell more tickets through email. Right. Now, most of them don't care about that kind of thing because at the end of the day, they're the box office manager. They're just trying to keep things running. But that's that's what we had going on there. I think. Ticketmaster has moved on to a different partner, but they still have this program going and all that sort of thing. Um, so that was my role. It was more of a consultant within mm -hmm. Ticketmaster helping other people. But this unique event popped up and my boss called me and she's like, you have this opportunity. You can go out and support the inauguration. We'll fly out to DC and put you up for three weeks. And you know, it's a really unique experience. You don't have to say yes. People who've done it before have said good things about it. Some have said bad things. Sure. Um, and looking back, you know, it was a really amazing experience to be a part of just within that Ticketmaster world. It was sure. really, really cool. I, I don't care for DC that much. Three weeks there is a lot for me. Um, just yeah. politics is a bit much for me. Good food. But, oh, the food was great. Yeah. And we had a really good time. We had a great team there. I mean, everybody that was supporting this event was fantastic, including after the episode. So, um, so yeah, it was just that, that's what I was there for. And, and that's the event that I was supporting and all that. So, um, you want me to dive right into what happened? Yeah, I, I guess. I mean, I feel like, <laughs> I mean, I'm in a good headspace. Uh, yeah, I think, yeah, I'm, let's I'm good. Dive. All right. I mean, I've told this story a few times now, so I think I'm starting to get the rhythm down for it, but I don't remember the exact date. Um, I do know that the Redskins were in a playoff game, which is which is important. I think they were um, playing the Seahawks. Okay. I think you could be right. You could be That's right. Awesome. But they were playing at you know, whatever the field is mm, they play yeah. at in yeah, Washington yeah. at the time. I think they were already out of RFK at that point. So, okay. um, so yeah. So, so this is going on, which has some relevance later. But essentially what happened was 
I was building out an email that was going to go out to the list of people who said they were interested in tickets. Okay. And it was supposed to be scheduled to go out at 4.30 the next morning. Okay. This is when the on sale was going to happen. It was, everyone had a personalized URL. And how, but there was was, a how big was this file? How many subscribers were on this list? Um, I want to say it was about 300,000. Okay, so good, good size list. So a decent size. But you know, for, for an MTA like Exact Target, it goes care. like that, yeah. which is also <laughs> relevant. <laughs> um, so yeah I, God. <laughs> I still get goosebumps when i tell the story too i get it so man. <laughs> so i i build the email i have a rep from the dnc come over and tell me that everything is good it all looks good it all checks out you know i had the time scheduled 4 30 such and such date and so I'm like, all right, I'm going to go ahead and press, you know, submit, which is supposed to queue it for the morning because it was scheduled. Right. And this is where it got interesting. And I, I am not trying to throw anybody at um, Exact Target or Salesforce under the bus here. This is just a pure statement of what happened. Okay. No, I, we're good. <laughs> yeah. So I, I hit submit, whatever the, the name on the button was, and had a weird feeling. <laughs> <laughs> like it, it's just like you know as soon as you do something you're like hmm, should i really have done that well and and, and there's so there's people that are not email marketers that watch this right that's part of the game okay right? no, that's fair that's fair so, that's so fair. let me explain what you're talking about it's called send anxiety and it's a very <laughs> real thing right when you've got yes. you you put all of this time into a, an email right making sure the creative is perfect the subject line is perfect everything right Yep. And then, uh, and then you you sit down to the interface. You know, mm -hmm. you've gotten three thousand people double checking everything, and you click a single button, and now this email goes out to ten million people, right? Mm -hmm. And and uh, because email generates so much revenue, right? Uh, yep. you know, we mess one thing up, and it's it's a half million dollar difference, right? Yes. And so when you're sitting down and you're like, I have to click that button. It's, I mean, it's overwhelming. And the first it's time, you, yeah. <laughs> and the first time that you do it, you're like, <laughs> I'm gonna be okay. So, right. So you, that's you at this moment. You're like, mm -hmm. something's weird. I'm supposed it was to. Just a, yeah, it was just a weird intuition in the back of my head. I'm like, something about that seems wrong. I'm like, so then I dive into the back end of the system. I'm like, oh shit. I, I don't know what language we can use on here. You but, can use uh, that language-ish. Okay. <laughs> All right, yeah, okay. So yeah, I was like, oh no, I, something's just wrong. So I dive into the back end and it hits me. Well, well real that, quick, so your intuition says something's wrong. It's so a rather than sort of, rather than being like, oh, well, screw it, it's probably fine. You're like, no. Oh, no, no. It's I've got to figure out what, I, I had this weird feeling in the back of my head. So I'm like, I've got to validate that this is true or not. Okay. And if true, what can I do to fix it? <laughs> so I jump in and, you know, it was a list of about 300,000. And uh, what happened is in, in the regular retail version, if you will, of Marketing Cloud or Exact Target, you know, if you scheduled for a time that had already passed, right. then it would tell you. It would say, you can't schedule this because that date already happened. Right, right. The white label version didn't have any safeties. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So That's to me, it's kind of like, it's like new, yeah, it's like nuclear launch codes. There, there were none. <laughs> I well, I mean, that's the early days, way. right? I mean, the early right, days right. of email, why would we need safeties? Right, right. And you know, God, that takes me even back to college. Like I never wanted to be in Air Force ROTC in college because I didn't want to be a, a button pusher. Right. Like, that's what we called the guys who were going to go to the missile silos. And yet here I am. So here we are. Yes. Yeah. So. So, yeah, so it didn't have the safety in there. And it said, oh, no, this date's already passed. We've got to get the email out the door. And it sent it. And, you know, with ET, 300,000 emails go in about three minutes. Uh, so by the time I had investigated this. I've seen it go faster <laughs> than that. And that's my story yeah. when it's turned. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the emails were already out the door. I'm like, oh, no, <laughs> this is bad. Because all my ticketing team, they didn't have the website up and running yet. Right. And I'm like, hey guys, uh, we're gonna have a problem in about two minutes. As these things starting to hit, people are gonna come into the site. And so, you know, 
as I'm saying that to them and trying to explain what's going on, I had an oops email prepped, ready to go. Smart. Yeah, I mean, that's standard procedure, right? You, right. If you make a mistake, you want to recover from it. And especially if it's a timing situation, you definitely want to say, oh, you know, we made a mistake, we're testing, whatever the case is. Honestly, this is just my own mistake. I'm owning this. No, and, and I get it. I have one of those. You know, it comes down to me. So, which, you know, there might be people who catch wind of the story and will be interested because, you know, we were in the national news cycle for three days. Rachel Maddow was basically calling for my head. <laughs> there were so many conspiracy theories about what happened. Right. No, it's just me. I pushed the wrong button at the wrong time. That's right, right, all right. it was. So, uh, yeah, it was a scary, scary time. The aftermath, which we'll get to, was just frightening. So, um, so, so you, you send this out. You uh -huh. hit the, the whole, oh, shit, what did I do? And first yep. thing you do is alert your team. Hey. First thing I do is give the team a heads up. Like, the website team needs to know people are, traffic's going to start coming in right. droves. Because these are highly sought after tickets. I mean, whether, whatever your politics are, you know, Obama's first inauguration was a really big deal. Of course, and, it, right. it was historic. You know, this was, it was historic. It truly was. And so we knew these were going to be high demand things. Like we had a whole bunch of load balancing going on for the server that was supporting the sale. I mean, it, this is this is just like Metallica or Madonna or bigger or Swift or anybody going on sale. Same situation, which you know Ticketmaster is accustomed to, but such a finite supply. Right. And it's only it's a one time only. It's not a full tour. Right. So yeah, hugely hugely complex thing. Um, so I have the email the the oops email prepped. And go back to the DNC rep again. I'm like, here, we can send this. And she turns to the ticketing team. And she's like, what do you guys think? Can we be ready? Can we add the inventory loaded here in like two minutes and get everything going? And they are freaking rock stars. These guys are awesome. Right. Uh, Ken and his crew were absolutely amazing. I just, I love them to death. And so they immediately went into crisis mode. They got everything up and running. And the DNC made the call. Yeah, I'll let the sale go. So it's already there we out. are. It's, it's already, already out. out. Don't worry about yeah. the oops email. Let's exactly. just sell the tickets. But it gets better. <laughs> it gets so much better. So, you know, normally you think, all right, I'm sending an email to 300,000 people. Yes, we sent it out early, but the web team is ready to go. The ticket, the inventory is there. We can sell this thing. And it's okay. It's okay. It shouldn't be that big a deal. Right. Well, at the time I sent it out, it was in the middle of that football game. So a number of people who might have wanted to buy those tickets but weren't influential, influential enough to get free tickets or part of their other allocations, right. they're all out at the football game. Right. They're not paying attention to their phone. They're watching this good playoff game. So, you know, of course, they're angry the next morning. Timing matters. That's, that's business. Yeah. You know, there's the, there's the uh, shout out to audience point. So we're good. Continue. Yes. Yes. Yeah. If I had some time optimization for this. Well, I mean, truly, like, I, we can talk about that later. The whole, the whole concept, instead of dropping the full file, we've only dropped eight people, right? right? We right, can recover. Right. But anyway, absolutely. Continue. <laughs> so I, I just didn't anticipate the amount of fallout that would come from this. And so uh, we end up pulling a long night. I think the event sold it, all the events sold out in like an hour. It was sure. just insane. And right. So we all went to bed that night thinking, yeah, this will be okay. We survived. We survived. We survived. Yeah. Artificial crisis, not a big deal. Next day comes and we're plastered all over the news. <laughs> like ticket masters conspiring to keep people out of the events and all this kind of stuff. It was insane. Well, it turns out what happened was, I forget the name of the guy who was the, uh, like the big data science guy that helped Obama win. Yeah. Um, but he, apparently he had told people who hadn't, again, donated enough money or whatever right. his inner circle but they didn't have enough influence to get free tickets or get their own allocation but they were going to have to participate in this public lottery basically um he had told them exactly when that email was coming oh. so these are influential people right and so they were angry because again these entitled people didn't right. get their As, didn't I, get their front row seats well and they and to be fair they probably donated a bunch of money that felt like oh, yeah. the front of the line I, I, I'm sure, and, and I don't want to get into all of that because I have my own issues with, you know, <laughs> buying access and politics. To me, it's well, kind of like charities, but that's a different story well, for a different and, day. And that is a that is a long <laughs> that will that that <laughs> that conversation will take place. <laughs> yes, that'll be over beers when we get together next, maybe yes. in October when I'm out there. 
Um, so, so yeah, so we break into the national news cycle for this thing. I am just, you know, my boss calls me, she's back here in Denver and she's like, what happened? And so I go through what happened with her and she's like, all right, I got you. And, you know, to her credit, uh, my boss, Nicole Hobby was absolutely the rock I needed during this crisis because huge. there were several people above her who were calling for my termination within Ticketmaster. Of course they yeah. People who had come to me later at later events and internal meetings and stuff and said, you know what, I felt so bad about that thing. I had you back too. I'm like, yeah, I know better. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But between Nicole and then Jared, who's president and CEO of, or president of Ticketmaster, um, they're just, they're phenomenal leaders. They're phenomenal managers. And they, they took care of me. They walked me through it. And good so, but it was super stressful. And good leaders protect their people, right? And they do. And, and, when it's an honest mistake, when it's an right, honest mistake, right, let's right, be right. real. I mean, if I had done something deliberate or if I had a history of making a bunch of mistakes, then, then I could see it. You know, there's, you have to make course corrections. But as an individual, especially in this business, you have to learn from your mistakes and you have to be able to move on. You know, when you talk to uh, baseball players, you know, they struck out last time they were at bat, they have to get that out of their head because right. they have to get up there and perform again. Mm -hmm. Same way for us when we're pushing the button, right? Yep. When you get up to bat to push that button and send to a half a million people again, <laughs> you might be shaking, right. shaking for like three months. Right, right. But, you know, at the end of the day, you got to do it because it's your job. So, so it bubbles up within Ticketmaster up to the CEO level. Everyone oh, yeah. is aware of this situation. Yeah. Everybody in the company now knows who I am, which is not good. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. So and at this point, you're freaking out, right? I'm, I'm assuming. Uh -huh. I mean, it's not at this point, you're not even worried about your job anymore. Right. You're not like, oh, I don't no, know. I was, I was absolutely worried for my job. I mean, that especially those first two days, because I knew I knew the impact. You could see it on TV. Right. It was on every freaking news channel. <laughs> I hate the 24 hour news cycle, but it was on every channel. You know, a really good friend of mine that I went to. I've known since fourth grade. He was a full bird at the Pentagon. And I'm like, I wanted to reach out to him and see if there was a small country he could invade to change the story. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> You know, it's just that kind of thing. Belarus? And, I'm, see, it's, yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I think at that point, we had already done Haiti once or twice. So, yeah. Okay. Fair, <laughs> but, good okay. But, so, yeah. So, you're on yeah, every news channel. And, right. no, I, I just mean this. I know you well enough. I, I know you were worried about your job. Is my job going to be here? But you're worried more at this point about, man, what are the long-term ramifications to the world? Right? Like, you'll get uh, a good job. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Because, you know, the other thing that I was doing as part of this process, and that wasn't the only email we sent, we sent a bunch of emails and out some different things relevant to the events. And so I was also monitoring the reply box. So after this thing went out, yes. oh my God, I got emails from not I, the company, but through the reply mechanism, we got emails from people all over the country saying, this was my only chance to see this historic event. I mean, total tearjerker stories. I just felt absolutely awful okay. for all these people who, for whatever reason, have missed out. And, you know, genuine people, yep. like, like you and me type people who normally wouldn't get access to that type of an event. Right. Right. They had a shot and they didn't get it, which, you know, that would have been the case anyway, because again, the, the inventory was limited. So the timing of the send wasn't a thing. It was more for the entitled people and how they were omitted from the process. I didn't feel as bad for them. Um, but that's because I have problems with entitled people. So, yeah. All right. So, as promised, do we? Are there more pieces we need to cover? Because again, I absolutely like. When when do email marketers get to be the bad boys of rock and roll? You know what I mean? <laughs> that's that's the biggest bit of it all, really. I mean, it was just it was a it was a mortifying experience as I was going through it. It definitely gave me some character as a person. Give right. me an amazing story to tell now. It's a great icebreaker at email marketing. In any, any event, so, honestly. Trust yeah. me, any, and, and, you any know, event. But it also helped me as a manager. <laughs> it helped me as a manager too, because now when my team makes a mistake, I can tell them, you know, I can truly tell them, don't feel so bad. It didn't get you in the news. Right. Is that it? <laughs> You're not on the <laughs> Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's all you did. Good deal.
Well, mine pales in comparison to yours, but again, for the sake of full circle, uh, I was doing, this is early, early email stuff for me too. It's, it's before we were even aware what the word PII meant or the, you know, right, the right. personally identifiable information and the idea that we would have separate email lists and all of this, right? And mm -hmm. so um, I didn't have a black, a list of black hole emails. Um, I had a breakpoint set in my code and I was doing some work with exact target as well. Uh, yeah. Transactional sends, right? And the, the issue was things had been going really, really slow. Okay. And a transactional send is, you know, I say, Hey, send this thing and exact target at the time goes, okay, send. Right. And, uh, they had had some issues with transactional sends, triggered sends being uh, fast and they had made some fixes and changes. And, and I had had some as well. And, um, man, it is embarrassing. You know, the feeling that you were saying earlier, <laughs> I feel that uh -huh. right now. You know what yeah. I mean? And, and, and I think that, that moment. that's that power of the mistake. So what happened was I expect my code to hit a breakpoint. It misses the breakpoint. It jumps over it. I send mm -hmm. out 100, roughly about 100,000 messages to people I don't know, like <laughs> just email addresses. And it's a mug. It's a test message that I have in my account that says it's got a picture of a unicorn on it. And it says your feelings are stupid and wrong. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh my god and i know so i'm all, you know immediately i'm on the phone like oh i did uh, uh. uh-huh now the oh, big, bigger picture you know one email it, it went into spam for most people it you know i there was fallout from it and and right. i think this is where we start to hit pause and we say how do we learn how do we recover? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, um, for me, uh, what are the things that I did? I put all kinds of safeguards in. We got rid of any email address at all, ever. Right? We're, no! And we started just using black hole addresses that couldn't go anywhere. We started right. using only black hole sending accounts. So even if some, by some snafu, someone got an email into the a real one, who knows? Add contact. Look, I added a contact, right? Oh, test right. it first, right? We're, no, no, no. It goes into the black hole, the void. It never, ever gets through. Okay, so there, we've got some, we've got some safeguards there, right? Um, uh, shutting down all kinds of data. Um, uh, I, building, building not just breakpoints into code, but uh, isolating uh, procedures so that the things can't happen again. Like, <sighs> taking that moment to say, I screwed up. Mm -hmm. How do I learn from this? How do I recover? Right. How do I not do this again? Right, right. Well, tell me about your, what did you do? Because again, like mine was, it went under the radar, right? Like no one really saw it. I mean, I felt mm -hmm. happy, but at the same time, I didn't hit the national news cycle. Did you right. make any changes? Let me, let me give you that in a second. I just got a delivery at the door that I have to show my ID for. Oh no, this is perfect. Uh, movable ink is sending me beer. <laughs> hey, right? mo movable ink. Uh, I'll be right back. <laughs> I, I'll email you guys my um, my uh, address so that you can send that same beer to me. Um, we'll leave right, it. I'm back. Hey, that I'm was back. fast. I didn't think you could you could uh, ship beer I, th I mean i thought alcohol there was some now yeah, there's so apparently there's a uh a delivery there's a delivery service for everything there's an um, uber eats for beer it's called drizzly and they're just a delivery service so you have to show your id and everything oh cool but yeah so That's thank you to move the link i i did not mean to give them a shout out here but thank you anyway no it's all good it's not like that on this uh chester <laughs> you know what I mean? it's, just, it's just us talking um That's so true. Anyway, Tell me about recovery. How did you recover from this thing? Did you build safeguards in? Well, so, you know, doing this kind of thing, there are two, there's two things you do, right? And a lot of people who are new to the industry now kind of benefit from the first bit, which is you start creating your checklists. I now know all of the things that could go wrong, or I think I know, because, you know, you never do. There's yeah. always new stuff that pops up. But you start creating your punch list. These, all these things need to be double checked. These need to have another set of eyes on them. You know, we start building in just 
deeper and deeper checks to make sure that the thing's going to go, just like a checklist for an airplane. When you're taking off, there's a lot of safety stuff you got to make sure is in place. Same thing here. But to me, I think the bigger part of it was more the mental recovery. Like this truly could have ended my career in email. There is absolutely no question about it. And so it, for me, it was, I just had to figure out how to get through it because as great and supportive as my team was, like one of the, one of the guys on the, on the ticketing team was telling me, he's like, yeah, there's one time I let $30,000 walk out of a box office I was managing, like totally unintentional. And that's a bit like, we didn't lose money on this. We lost, we lost prestige. There was the PR impact, but we didn't lose any money. And thirty thousand dollars for a small venue is a lot of money. So you know everybody has their own story, and it's how you come back from that. And it really is all up here. And you have to know, you have to be able to break it down and say, "This is what actually happened." And at the end of the day, I am responsible. And you right. have to taking, own that. Taking ownership, being like, "Okay, I made a mistake." Yes. Yes. And and uh, it, with everyone, right? Like, absolutely. Yeah. The blame falls here, and, and that you know honestly. Right. That's been a hard lesson for me professionally as well, right? Yeah. Um, I, I don't know why, but for me, it's all the, the idea of sort of saying, yeah, I, I'm, it's, there's always a reason. Like, well, you know, I didn't, it was, it was because of this thing or that thing, right? Because this is mm -hmm. what's going on in my own mind, right? Like, I'm, right. I'm rationalizing it, and I know a lot of people do, but whatever. I'm rationalizing this in my head, this mistake that I made, right? Mm hmm when what I need to do is say, I, I did this. Right. I made a mistake. Right. And I'm sorry. Yeah. And not qualifying. That's the biggest thing. Yeah. Not qualifying it like, hey, if mm -hmm. I offended you, not apologize. Like, oh, uh, you know, I'm, if, I'm, I made a mistake. Exactly. And I'm sorry. Yeah. No, and that was, I think that for me was probably the single biggest thing that ever happened to me was being able to acknowledge that. It was really easy for me to say, well, ET didn't have the safeties in place. Of course they didn't. It's not, it's not their fault I put the wrong date. No, no, it's no, not. no. It, that's me. That was something I physically did. Right. And so, you know, that has translated to a lot of parts of my life though. Like being able to do that there, I acknowledge I'm not the best father. I acknowledge I'm not the best husband. Well, I'm not married anymore, but you know, I'm not, yeah, yeah, I'm not yeah. always the best partner. And that has enabled me to become stronger at those things because right. now I can see, yes, these are the mistakes I made. I can own that and I can do the work that needs to be done to move past those things. Right. Whether it's professional, personal, whatever. That has enabled me to, I think, really thrive. Right. Um, and I, I, but it also has enabled me to manage teams with compassion. Because right. until you've made that Cal Berger mistake, right. it's really easy to point out other people's mistakes. Yes. You know, and, and, and <laughs> you know, so I, I don't know if this is going the way you were wanting it to I, go. It, but, it, yeah. it always goes the way it's supposed <laughs> to go, right? right. Water right. finds the right path uh, with gravity, right? I mean, that's like the that. thing is it kind of goes where it goes. And, you know, it is amazing to me. Uh, this and I don't mean to make this a, uh, a religious discussion with you because you and I have had those and, and that's <laughs> right. <laughs> but I, I, here's the thing. And, and, it, and I'll, I'll base it on Christianity because that's my understanding of the world. Right. Mm -hmm. But in order for me to understand mistakes, I have to have had made them. That is the yes. whole basis of I think lots of faith structures, but certainly Christianity, right? Sure, sure. I, I am broken. I've made mistakes. And because of that, you know, there's this sense of I'm not worthy, right? Suddenly now right. The, the, this, this gift of like, you're forgiven. <laughs> Whoa, right? I mean, yeah. what, what you're talking about, right? It's that humility. And so when you have a team of people who, mm -hmm. oh crap, I, I sent out a, a subject line with a typo in it, right? Oh, are you going to right. fire me? No, let's go right. get a drink, right? Like that's the thing. Yeah. Is once, you, yeah. once, you, once you've been in the pit, you're like, yeah, yeah. who cares? Yeah. It's, it's a way better perspective to be. And I think it facilitates a way better method of managing people and of building a high-performing team. You know, right. when I was at Trendline, 
I was blessed to walk into a situation where true rock stars of the industry were working. And, you know, people that had helped mentor me into the business, even like Alex Williams, yeah. just unbelievable right. like that. Alex is awesome. And then to be able to go work with them, but not only work with those people, but then build my own team yeah. of super overachieving, high performing people that are still doing amazing work, even since I've left and still doing a great job because I had the farm system to elevate somebody into my role who's just killing it. So yeah, it's just, it, it has it has afforded me a lot. That one mistake where I was just so so terrified well, changed and, my life. And and in the, I love that. Thank you for yeah. saying that because again, I, you know, we we will have email marketers watching this. We will have non-email marketers watching this, and they will yeah. be this will be their face. They'll be like, <laughs> you know I, mean? I don't know. Is anybody really going to listen? I mean, shoot, you've had Adam Curry on here. What? I'm I'm not that caliber. Uh, no, I think you. Chester Bullock. So, <laughs> so uh, no, no. So the, the deal is what, what I was going to say was, and, and you were getting right at it. And that's this. Um, when you have leaders that understand how to fail and how to recover, they set an environment, right? That shows each other that, that rather than pointing fingers and saying, Chester, you did this shame on you you create an environment that says, okay, we all make mistakes. We all help mm -hmm. each other out. We are stronger together. So you, Absolutely. You, you, like I made a mistake, we all rally around you and we fix it instead of pointing fingers and saying you're out, right? It, yeah. Is, yeah. it, is, a, it is a culture and that culture, culture. Of, of mistake forgiveness recovery, man, mm -hmm. that is a powerful, powerful work. It is, work it absolutely is. And I will say that, you know, when we were, when I was at Trendline, we were also very fortunate to have some clients who were forgiving of the occasional mistake. Right. One thing Alex and I debated all the time was how do we create a culture where mistakes are acceptable? Right. And then you start going down the rabbit hole of, well, what's an acceptable mistake versus unacceptable? Right. Like, is there a dollar value attached? Because, you know, in the agency world, you make a big enough mistake, you mm -hmm. have to, you've got restitution and you're going to lose the account. So, you know, your business is on the line at some point. So like, again, what's acceptable, what's not, what are teachable moments versus what's not and all that sort of thing. And I, I think that we did a pretty decent job of fostering that and creating that there. Cool. Um, Chester, uh, we're, we're, out, we're running right on the very end of time here. I wanna say this uh, publicly, uh, it was not easy for you to share publicly this story because um, this is the biggest venue it's been heard in <laughs> and it makes you super vulnerable right because oh, yeah. you're exposing you're exposing what you see personally as your very worst like on my worst day this is who I am and as I was starting to share that's what I felt so I just want to say thank you for for sharing that again the 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 rationale on this was to sort of provide a, a discussion for email marketers, but for the whole world around here's how we recover. We all make mistakes, right? We do. Yeah. And, 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 you know, I think there's the other piece too that we haven't talked about. And I'll just throw that out there that you were kind of hitting at. There are times when the mistake is so large that you have to move on. Right. Yes, yes. Fortunately, I haven't had one of those, but this could have easily been that right. point. Where, where there is no recovery. I think mm -hmm. the important thing there is who, what you do, your job does not define you, right? right? Your value comes not from what you do for other people, but your value comes from who you are, period, right? Mm -hmm. And so like you made a mistake. Yeah, I'm sorry. You're going to have to find a new job and that sucks. Right. But you're not a bad person. You're going right. to be okay. You're going to recover. Thousands of people have gone before you and have recovered and yeah. thousands of people will come after you and recover. Yeah. And so, you know, I, I guess that bigger picture is, and, and one of the things I kind of always try and tap into a bit is I'm available. I mean, I'm pretty available online, all the different channels. People want to talk about this, reach out, you know? 
Uh, yeah, and, and this could probably be a topic for a whole other conversation, like how I got started in the business was through the grace of people like yourself, Joel Book, Alex Williams, all saying, you know, if you got questions, come to me, Right. ask me. And I took advantage of that. And now they're some of my best friends. They started asking me questions as my proficiency got better. And that's huge to have that kind of community and to have that kind of mindset. Again, we, we could do a whole other session on that. But yeah. that is the most powerful thing. And that's why I tell everybody. It doesn't matter what events I'm, I'm at speaking or whatever. My Twitter address is on there. Yep. You can search my name and find my email address. It's not that hard. Right. So anybody who wants to reach out to me, I always make that available because you don't know who, who really needs that help and who doesn't, but you want to help. It. And I owe that to the community. Thank you for your vulnerability. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for making yourself available to people with questions. Appreciate that. Wow. Thanks for having me, Paul. This is awesome. Chester, as always, um, I, I look forward to getting to have many, many, many more conversations with you. Absolutely. I can't wait to see you. Um, hopefully it's before October, but certainly October I'll be out in Chattanooga. So. Excellent. Sounds good. Thanks, man. All right, cool. Thanks, man. Um, I thought it was awesome. You're still recording. I don't care. I don't know if you want to turn that off. <laughs>